Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service, Amphazila Park in Johannesburg. According to figures released last year, there are almost 6 billion cell phone subscribers in the world. That's almost a cell phone for every human being on this planet. Cellular technology has certainly revolutionized the way communication takes place in the world. It's put communication within the reach of a lot more people who would otherwise not have had access to communication. But this communication revolution has not been without problems. Cell phone companies that provide the service have been trying to maximize their profits. South Africans, for example, pay amongst the highest cell phone charges in the world. Our guest today argues that here in South Africa, it's the poor that are actually subsidizing the rich when it comes to cellular costs. Today we're talking to Dr. Dale McKinley. Dale is involved in the Right to Know campaign and he's going to tell us about a new campaign that they're launching. The campaign is trying to bring down the cost of cell phone charges in South Africa. Welcome to Saxus, Dale. Thank you, Fazila. Now, Dale, um, tell us about this campaign that you're involved in. Um, what specifically are the demands around bringing down cell phone costs? Well, the first thing that the campaign starts with is the constitutional right that we have under Section 16 to impart and access information. Um, that's our starting point. And on the basis of that, uh, we're, we're looking at this, as you say, this explosion of cell phone technology and connectivity. And South Africa has even got one of the highest uh, ownership, cell phone ownership rates. I think it's 90%. Um, so uh, per capita, we have one of the highest in the world. And this has been celebrated as a, you know, a new form of communication, people being in touch. But basically what we have found out through our research and uh, our obviously experiences in communities is that a large portion of our population, particularly poor people, are unable to access that, that um, airtime simply because of the cost, the high cost. Uh, let's give an example. Uh, we uh, found out through research through the International Telecommunications Union that South Africa, according to their figures, has the six highest cell phone charge rates in the world, in other words, airtime, um, and that on one SMS, uh, the cell phone companies are making up to 3,000% profit. It costs them 2.6 cents for an SMS and they charge us up to 70 cents for an SMS. When we were talking earlier on, you were telling me that one of the demands could be asking for text services to be provided for free. That's correct. Um, and you were mentioning to me international examples, cases in some countries where this is indeed the the, the reality for people, they don't pay for tech services. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, what, what we have found is that in those countries which have uh, extensive uh, telecommunications infrastructure, the United States, for example, large uh, parts of Europe as well, and even parts of Asia, uh, in that context, because texting actually doesn't cost anything in terms of, it doesn't take up any data space, generally speaking, on the network, it is offered generally for free. In the United States, you can text as much as you want. It makes no difference. Um, and the cell phone rate charges are, are quite uh, low, and that's the case in many other countries. And what we're saying is, we are being told we have world-class infrastructure. <laughs> we have the world-class uh, cell phone industry. Well, let's have world-class prices. Uh, you know, let's, let's bring it down to that. We can't have it both ways. And uh, so that in, in that context, what we're saying is, we believe that the cell phone companies are taking advantage of the South African public, and particularly the poor who cannot afford contracts. Dale, can you give us some examples of exactly how the companies are extracting costs from people? The cell phone companies are profiteering in many different kinds of ways, and one of those ways is through pre the difference between prepaid and contract users with regards to airtime. For example, when the prepaid user buys airtime, they buy 50 rand, 100 rand, whatever it is, and that is supposed to last for however long it takes you. It could last for six months, a year, however long it takes you to use that airtime. What we found out and have done our own research with uh, regards to prepaid users is that people are being cut off 
uh, after like three months. If they don't use that 60 Rand, they're being cut off. So they lose what they paid for. This is an illegal act on the part of the cell phone companies. They're denying that they're doing this, but we know that they are because we have many, many different empirical studies that show that this is the case with people's experience in prepaid users. So that's one of the areas uh, in, in regards to that. The other, of course, as I sort of alluded to earlier on, was the fact that the simple unit charges uh, for spending a minute talking are much higher, much like prepaid electricity. With people who get prepaid electricity per unit end up paying more than the credit users. And the same on the cell phone. So it penalizes those that are least able to afford cell phone communication and airtime and who have to buy the prepaid vouchers on two fronts. And with specific reference to Vodacom, uh, which is the largest uh, with MTN, but certainly the largest coverage in South Africa, what is beginning to happen is they have loaded so many people onto their network, and yet their infrastructure has not kept up. So what you find happening is people's calls getting dropped, is people un being under texting, delaying for two to three hours. And that is, if the, the whole selling point of cell phone commun is instant communication, then that's not being uh, provided and nobody's paying for that. You're not getting free airtime, you're not getting some re uh, you know, refunds. Uh, so, in fact, they're profiteering on the fact that oftentimes what they're offering is not what they're giving. And what would you uh, say is the level of understanding in the public about, you know, how much they're being exploited? Do the public know? Not much. Um, that's our, it's, it's going to be a long campaign. People are aware that uh, something is not quite right, I think. Uh, when we have done our educational campaigns and people say, 3,000% profit on an SMS, my goodness, I knew that I was playing too much. But it's, it's an innate uh, sense that yes, um, but in terms of basic knowledge of this, no. I think that there has been an unfortunate uh, trend to celebrate this cell phone technology and this connectivity without looking at the pricing issue and without looking at the deeper ideological um, issues involved about whether or not in our country we should be having some degree of free communication and free services just like other basic services. So how do you intend engaging with private companies to try and get them to, to listen to your demands? Well, the first thing that we have done is we've written to them and we've showed them this research, we've produced some uh, information. We wanted them, we asked them to respond to that. Um, so we engage essentially first. Their response has been fairly predictable. Uh, their response is, no, you're wrong. Uh, we actually um, are not charging this because we have all these uh, hidden costs that we have to cover, the infrastructure, the rollout of the network, and all of these other kinds of things. Yes, we do realize that we could bring costs down somewhat, and we're beginning to do that, uh, but it's going to take some time, and we're going to work with government and so forth and so on. So their, essentially their response has been, there's nothing wrong. Yes, we understand that there is a, we can improve, but uh, you know, don't get upset and, and just chill out. Um, so that engagement obviously hasn't worked, so we've basically taken it to the next level. Over the last two months, we've marched. Um, we've mobilized communities in Cape Town and Joburg, and we've marched to Vodacom, MTM, and Cell C, which are the three major cell phone companies, to begin to put public pressure. We started a media campaign on this to put it into the public debate so that people begin to talk about this and begins to be raised as a national issue. So talk to me a little bit more about the rationale underpinning the campaign and particularly linking that to the right to communication in our uh, constitution. Absolutely. As I said, the six, section 16, the right to impart and access information. Now, most people who live in rural areas and informal settlements don't have access to desktop computers or not on the World Wide Web in terms of their, uh, they don't have uh, laptops. So people say, well, we've got the cell phone, you can get on Twitter, you can get onto WhatsApp, you can do all these things, but you have to have data time in order to do that. So accessing and imparting information uh, is, is a right that now has moved into the technological world as far as it's not simply going to a library or getting information out of your government about a, a, a trade deal or something like this. And in that context, we believe that that is a fundamental constitutional human right. If people are not able to access information and to communicate information, well, they're left out of this, love, this incredible revolution. And that's much like economic, uh, what we have economically. Is there's a whole range of people that are left out of the economy and the elites that enjoy the privileges of that. So what we're saying is we believe we have a right to communicate, a right to, to um, 
be able to access the World Wide Web and to be able to access data time. And in that context, we're asking for the cell phone companies to basically provide a free amount of airtime and free SMSs. We don't believe it'll really fundamentally affect their bottom line. Thank you very much for join joining us, Dale. Thank you, Fazila. And thank you to our listeners and viewers for joining us at Saxis. And remember, if you're looking for more social justice analysis, you can get that at our website on www.saxis.org.za. Thank you.